Now, I have seen no reason to believe that Donald Trump or any of the people at his church knew about what he did. But now they do. So Mm -hmm. let's get a statement out of Donald Trump denouncing this guy. Let's see empty pews when this guy goes and tries to give a speech about morality. Because now you know that he is a child rapist. And by the way, let's not forget the context. That for years now, the right has been utterly obsessed with the idea of sexualization of children. That has been their literal crusade that they've gone on. Well, now we have a child rapist. It's a freebie, denounce him and prove that this is not hypocrisy, okay? Prove that this is actually something you care about. Robert Morris, the founding pastor of Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas, has faced various controversies and scandals over the years. While Morris is known for his influential preaching and expansive church network, several issues have brought scrutiny to his ministry. One of the major concerns has been about financial transparency and the potential misuse of church funds. Critics have raised questions about the church's handling of donations, the opulent lifestyle of its leadership, and the lack of clear publicly available financial reports. This has led to calls for greater accountability and transparency in how funds are managed and used. Robert Morris's involvement in political matters, particularly his role as a spiritual advisor to former President Donald Trump, has drawn significant attention. His political engagement has sparked debate about the appropriate role of religious leaders in politics and the potential conflicts that arise when spiritual authority is used to influence political outcomes. Robert Morris's removal from Trump's Evangelical Advisory Board and the subsequent condemnation of abuse by the Texas government highlight a significant moment of accountability and scrutiny in the intersection of religion and politics. Uh, I I was very sexually immoral uh, as a teenager. And it started early in my life and it it was very easy for me. So I looked for the girls that would be the most susceptible. And I learned how to spot this in girls. Uh, I looked for girls that did not have a good relationship with their father. I learned to spot that. I looked for girls that were insecure. And uh, I don't know, now I look back on this, I can tell I did it. It wasn't like a plan that I had, but I could, I could spot this. And I asked the Lord after I got uh, saved, God, what, what was the root? Why? You know, they said I was blessed. I know I wasn't blessed, I was cursed multiple, multiple affairs. And I don't understand this, God. And so what was the root? What was the open door in my life? Robert Morris, the influential pastor of Gateway Church, was a prominent figure on Donald Trump's Evangelical Advisory Board. This board consisted of various religious leaders who provided spiritual guidance and support to the former president. Morris's involvement with the board elevated his national profile and influence within both religious and political spheres. This incident also raises broader questions about the interplay between religion and politics, especially when prominent religious figures align themselves with political leaders. The blending of spiritual authority with political influence can create an environment ripe for exploitation and abuse of power, which can have devastating effects on both individuals and the larger faith community. I mean, let's add it to the list of um, clergy, of um, religious leaders, of Republican politicians, of advisors to Donald Trump, George Nader arrested on um, uh, uh, child sex pornography, child pornography, excuse me. Like, add it to the list. There are predators living among us, but they're not in pizza parlors trafficking children and hailing, you know, Hillary Clinton. They're just church elders, they're just priests. I mean, it's just wild, they're advisors. They're still, and what's crazy about this is that if she had gotten pregnant, these are the same people that argue that she should not have a right to to an abortion in that instance. That he, two years in, can just apologize and bounce right back. But if she ever, if she had gotten pregnant, she has to carry that child, bear that child and be the parent to that child for the rest of her life. That's what she gets, but he gets to be the leader of a church. Like it is so sick how hypocritical it is, right? It is so sick that the far right, look, if you are the right identity, 
If you are a white, rich, male, Christian, heterosexual, you can do whatever you want. If you're an undocumented immigrant and you touch a 12 year old, well, you should be hunted down and shot in the streets dead completely. There's yep. no redemption for you. How are you in this country in the first place? We're gonna do new every single night. We're gonna talk about you and put your face up at everywhere. Um, if you're black, forget it. There's no redemption. You're a thug, mm -hmm. right? But if you are a pastor, if you're a white guy, oh my God, he, he asked the family for forgiveness. As authorities continue to investigate, it is crucial for religious organizations to reflect on their governance structures and the safeguards in place to prevent such abuses. This may involve implementing more rigorous oversight mechanisms, fostering a culture of accountability, and encouraging open dialogue among congregants to voice concerns without fear of reprisal. However, his removal from the advisory board signifies a shift in response to growing concerns and allegations. The specific reasons for his removal have not been publicly detailed, but it typically reflects broader issues within his ministry and the pressures on religious leaders to maintain ethical standards. This move suggests an attempt to distance political figures from controversies that could undermine their standing or the credibility of their advisors. Well, allegations of child molestation from the 1980s forced the resignation of a mega church pastor in Texas. Robert Morris is resigning as accusations have surfaced that he molested Cindy Clemshire, seen here at the age of 12. The victim went public with the allegations five days ago. In the past, Morris has spoken often of having an extramarital relationship when he was younger. In a statement, the Gateway Church board says it believed that Morris was admitting to an affair with a young lady, not the abuse of a 12-year-old girl. I think it just shows that he's still lying to people. He's lying to himself, maybe. Gateway Church is based in South Lake, Texas, near Fort Worth. The church says it hired a law firm to review the report of past abuse and says it's expressed the deepest sympathy to the Clemishire and her family. The condemnation of abuse by the Texas government is a critical context for understanding Morris's removal. This condemnation likely relates to broader issues of misconduct within religious institutions in Texas, including allegations of financial mismanagement, abuse of power, and improper handling of allegations of misconduct. The Texas government's stance reflects a growing intolerance for abuses of power within religious organizations. It underscores the state's commitment to holding influential figures accountable, regardless of their status or affiliations. This condemnation aligns with a broader trend of increased scrutiny and demands for transparency within religious communities. The removal of Robert Morris from Trump's Evangelical Advisory Board, coupled with the Texas government's condemnation of abuse, marks a pivotal moment in the ongoing effort to ensure integrity and accountability within religious leadership. It serves as a reminder of the critical importance of ethical conduct and the need for transparency and accountability in maintaining the trust and respect of both congregants and the broader public.